I bring the peace of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. I'm going to open our Bibles. Uh, Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 16. Two teeth. Matthew 16, verse 13 forward. And the word of the Lord says the following. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, Philipp, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The church may be seated. My brethren, Jesus, when he was sent to the world, Jesus, he uh, takes this uh, commitment with the Father to cause men to live a life thinking on his eternity not on what was the eternity that they at that point understood that was. Because living eternally for them was to live uh, through the name. Father, Son, Son of the Son, especially when it was a man. Then, it was to live eternally because that son would carry the name, would be the descendant that would give continuity to everything that the Father had started. But Jesus, when he came to the world, he came to bring a new understanding regarding eternity with God. So then Jesus begins in the last three years of his life, he begins his ministry here on earth. And now he calls the disciples, prepare the disciples. One by one, he called them, brought them, and was showing little by little the importance of them to give themselves up, of letting go of the world, importance of them to let go of any involvement with the world, the importance of them of beginning to live, counting their days towards living in the presence of a living God, not a God of hearing about, not the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob and Isaac, but the living God. And Jesus now begins his ministry doing what he knew to do best was to bring men to hear his voice, his word, to know a new kingdom, to, ha to have a new transformed life, to be more lovely, more loving, to take care of uh, his neighbor, to learn how to forgive and 
Jesus begins his message this way, curing people. He would go where there was the needy. Jesus was there present. And this began to spread in the cities where he went. That Jesus, he was a prophet. He was, Jesus was a man that had a word that would calm down people's heart, that would bring peace. Jesus was a man that fed the multitude. Jesus was a man that cured a woman with the flow of blood. That resurrected the son of a widow already going towards uh, the cemetery. And this news began to spread and, um, in the midst of the multitude. And people began to follow Jesus. A few with their own personal interests, but others really wanting a blessing from God. Jesus now begins to prepare the people to have a place to adore God, which was going to be the beginning of the church. But Jesus could not count with the crowd with people that only wanted their own personal benefit. He begins at this moment going towards the nucleus, trying to understand people better, defining people better. And now he brings, he comes to the disciples and he asks a question. What is the people saying that I am? Oh, gossip is something good, right? Everybody likes it to speak. Hey, these people, be, you are being complimented, Master. Uh, everything is good. Everybody is liking you. After yesterday, then, the multiplication of the bread and fish, oh boy. But Jesus asked, what are they saying that I am? And he said, once a few are saying that you are John the Baptist, the other Elijah, other Jeremiah, and other even call you prophet. My brethren, this, those statements for Jesus, it took a shape. It, w it sounded in something in one way, but to others it sounded like a compliment. Because when you are compared to John the Baptist, the last of the prophets, it's something good. When you are compared to Elijah, the prophet that was taken to heaven, it's wonderful. Others, uh, when you are compared to Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, the prophesied before the captivity, the prophesied what was going to happen to the people before and during the captivity. It sounds great. But for Jesus, he was not expecting that. Because those comparisons defined, they showed to Jesus that man had not understood anything of what he was doing. They didn't understand anything. Because Jesus didn't come here to be um, a prophet. Jesus didn't come here to compete with Elijah, compete with John the Baptist, compete with Jeremiah or any other prophet. Jesus came to the world to show to men what a prophecy is. What was God's project for man's life? Jesus didn't come here just to prophesy to men, but he came to show to men about a path a man to need, needed to walk in 
and this was the Jesus himself. And now the question, he questions the disciples, and what about you? What do you think that I am? For sure, they looked to one another. Surely, the more uh, spiritual of them, they're waiting for the most spiritual to, to speak first, the one that was closest to Jesus, the most closest to Jesus, and, and then Peter rises up and speaks. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus turned to him and said, Blessed are you, Simon, Bars, Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. My brethren, man, in order to know Jesus in truth, man needs God to reveal himself to them, to man. Man needs to have an experience with the living Jesus not with the Jesus, the historical Jesus, not with the story of Jesus. Man needs to live, man needs to uh, let what was written in the Bible to be for him something important. But man not only need to give importance to what is written, but he needs to live what is written. But in order for man to leave what is written, he needs to know the writer, the author of the book. In the Bible for us is the most important book that man can ever acquire in, in his life or her life. The Bible for us is the Word of God. The Bible for us is the one that shows us the true way. The Bible for us shows the, the story, the history, but also leads us to live what is in the history. Man begins to know Jesus. Man begins to allow Jesus to control his life. Man allows the Holy Spirit to transform his heart. And I'm going to tell you one thing. There are many people inside of the churches like this crowd here, complimenting Jesus, comparing Jesus to a prophet, thinking they are really making a, a good compliment to Jesus, making positive uh, references to Jesus, carrying Bibles, singing songs, giving praise to God. But that's not, this is not what God expects of us. Those are people that truly don't know Jesus. Those are people that think that Jesus is really compared to Baptist, John the Baptist, a great prophet, the less of the prophets. But there's a difference between Jesus and John the Baptist. John the Baptist, his head was cut off. He was decapitated, and the Bible says that he is the head of the church, and no one can cut this. No one will take this away from us, because we have a government. We, the faithful church, we have a government, and this government is the Holy Spirit. Is Holy Spirits. Jesus is the head of the church. We are the body of Christ. Jesus is the one who has control over our lives. Everything that we do, we ask Him. All our necessities, all our uh, anguishes, trials and tribulations we pl place before the altar of the Lord. Believing and knowing and trusting that He will take care of all things. We don't have Jesus simply as a prophet. But we have Jesus as the Savior of our lives. The one who overcame death. The one who went all the way to the end and was victorious in everything. Others compared Jesus with Elijah. 
He was taken up to heaven. He was, was went to heaven. Jesus was also taken to heaven. But the difference is that Elijah is not coming back. He went to heaven to stay there. But Jesus will come back. Because he's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Jesus is everything that we need. Jesus is everything for us. Jesus, when he came to the world, he died, he resurrected, resurrected, and now he's on the right-hand side of the Father, waiting for the order to come back and to take our lives, to call us by our names, one by one. Can you imagine? What a blessing. This is very good. Having Jesus like this, others compared Jesus with Jeremiah the weeping prophet, the prophet that prophesied about the captivity, Jesus also wept. A couple of times Jesus wept. The Bible tells us that Jesus' life here was not easy. He had no place to sleep. He ate very poorly. He was living on the road, always hasting walking from Samaria to Jerusalem, to Judah, from here to there, walking, very little rest. He wept. There's not a single verse that says that Jesus smiled. There's no verse that says that Jesus laughed. But there are a couple of verses that says that Jesus cried. When he went to Jerusalem, he saw the Jerusalem with no prophets, Jesus wept. His tears were, sh were poured out. Jeremiah's light, uh, tears also was, were poured out, but it, it was nothing changed. The prophecy that he made that the people were going to be captive happened, even with him weeping, even with him seeing the suffering of the people, even knowing that he was going to spend his life in captivity. He cried, but nothing happened. But Jesus' tears, the tears that he shed for you and I, this, the blood that he shed in the cross of Calvary will change your luck. It will change your destination. You change your life. You take from you an eternal death, a judgment that will lead you to eternal death, and he's going to give you a judgment of eternal life. Because his blood was shed on that cross for your life, for in your place. In fact, there is a difference between Jesus and Jeremiah, and Jesus knew that. Jesus was the only one who knew what was happening, like any other prophet. Jesus is not just any other prophet. Jesus is Son of God. Jesus is God. The Father and Son of the Holy Spirit is the only one. Is the Trinity. And now he asks to the disciples, and now, what do you think that I am? You've seen many things. What do you think that I am? And was not the smartest one who answered, was not the more educated, was not the closest to Jesus, was Peter, uh, just a fisherman. A simple man, a common man, probably um, a man had a harsh life, and even a person that denied Jesus. But when the Bible s says that, when he says something, he's some, he says something that is prophetic. You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. My brethren, that's what the Lord wants us to understand tonight. Many people know Jesus. The world knows the story of Jesus. They keep the story of Jesus like many Christians don't keep. Jesus is born. There is a celebration. They exchange gifts. The turkey. A lot of food. Jesus dies. 
oh, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to eat there. You cannot eat meat, you can only eat fish. Codfish, oh, you can't, whoever likes codfish, oh boy. It's, it's a great day for them. Can Man knows about Jesus. Man knows the history of Jesus like no one other. No one else. But that's not that's not God expects from us because the story of Jesus is not going to lead anybody anywhere. Coming to a church, attending a church, you knowing the biblical verse, you memorizing biblical verse and mentioning biblical verse is not going to lead you anywhere. What is going to make you inherit an eternity is you knowing Jesus, the revealed Jesus. Is the Father giving to you an experience with you and salvation with Jesus. And tonight I ask a question to you. I'm going to be uh, bold now. I'm going to ask you, what do you think about Jesus? What do you expect from Jesus? What did you come here tonight expecting from Jesus? You want him to cure you? You want him to resolve your financial problem? You want him to resolve your family problem? Your problem with immigration? What do you want him to take care of in your life? Is that what you want from Jesus? Only this? He's much more than that. You need to know truly who is Jesus. Because in the day in which you know him, you find out He is much more than a simple miracle. You find out that He is much more than an answered prayer. You find out Jesus is everything that you need. And that we are here tonight not because we want a miracle. We're not here because we want simply that something that happened that may transform my life. No. We are here because Jesus is present. And you need to come to this church. You need to take care of your spiritual life. You need to know one thing. Jesus is greater than any miracle. He is the owner of the miracles. He is the owner of any cure. He is the owner of truth. He is the owner of the blessing that you need. He is the owner of the answer that you need. And you need to know Jesus and depth. You need to stop speaking about good things about Jesus and allow Jesus to look at you and is pleased with you. But in order for this to happen, you need to leave the historical. For this, you need to leave what is human reason. For this, you need to leave what is emotional, Leave it, all of this behind because this will never lead you anywhere. You spend your entire life here and you're not going to see any change in your life. What you truly need is to have a meeting with the Lord Jesus. You need to allow God to reveal to you who Jesus is. If you're here 20, 30, 3 days, 4 days, it doesn't matter if God has not changed your life yet. God has not transformed your heart. It is because you don't know Jesus. Because Jesus can do all things. My brother and sister, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's not only the, the Son of God, but he is the son of the living God. What Peter said there, Peter was taken over. He was completely in the Holy Spirit. He was inside of... Uh, he was completely anointed by oil of the Holy Spirit. The answer, Peter confirmed this to us. Today we understand it. On that day, Jesus was the only one who understood it. That's why he said, Blessed are you. Because we're not... The flesh of blood has not revealed this to you, but 
my Father who is in heaven. Because it is not through a miracle, through a cure, through an answer to a prayer, through something that the Lord may do physical for you that will cause you for you to surrender in, on God's feet. But you need to give yourself completely and allow God to do what He can do best. If you do this, surely you will have the same answer that Peter had. Because this is the answer of the faithful God. God answers this way. You are the Christ. Because we are faithful God, uh, church, the church of Christ. The faithful church is the one who's living moments in the presence of God. Allowing God to transform the hearts. Allowing God to change your, your personality. Allowing the Holy Spirit to change the way you speak, changing your life. Allowing the Holy Spirit to control your thoughts. The sins that takes over your life. The faithful church, the one who knows Jesus in depth, the church that knows Jesus, the revealed Jesus, the Jesus revealed by God is a, is a person transformed. It's a new creature because salvation is this. Salvation is you being a new creature. It's this, the story of that my life. It has no solution. I was angry. I'm angry. I'll always be angry. You know, angry people, cemetery is filled with people. Angry people, the cemetery is filled with angry people. The place for angry people is the cemetery or the prison. But in the church, it's a place for people that received a new birth in Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit does that. There are people that like to speak, to think that it's, it's, it's good for them to say those things. God has not changed your life. It's because you don't know Jesus. But tonight, He wants to show you. He wants to reveal you who He is and what He can do in your life. You just need to, tonight, you need to give your heart to, Lord, to the Lord like you never have done before. You can even think, oh, I've already accepted Jesus 20 years ago. Or two months ago, I accepted Jesus. But if you struggle with what uh, the things that pursue you, then it, it is because you, uh, the Lord has not transformed you. If you still tr struggles with the things that steals your sleep and takes your peace away from you, it is because you need to know that Jesus, like Peter here said, that Jesus was, you are the Christ. The Son of the Living God. The Son of God. The Living God. The God that is present here. The God who is not dead. The God that looks to you with eyes like uh, fl flames of fire that removes any impurity. A God whose voice is like of the many waters when He speaks, when He breaks you in the middle. He takes your pride away from you, your vanity. He takes anything that you think that you are, which is things that you think is advantageous to be, but he, he puts you on the dust. This is the God that we need to know. Because the transformation comes when God takes control of our lives. That's why he said, Blessed are you, Simon. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You know what is the word bless, blessed means? It's to be happy. If you're not happy, if you don't have peace, if you don't have this happiness of being alive, saved in Jesus, it is because you are wasting your time. You need to fight for this. Tonight, you need to say, Lord, I want to live this joy that I have not been able to live. I want to look inside of myself and feel at peace with myself. I want, Lord, to be a new creature. I want to meet Jesus, Christ, Son of God. Amen. 
May the Lord then bless us. Let's sing a song. And this question, I'm going to say once again, if you, what do you say that Jesus is? Who is Jesus for you? While the praise group is going to sing a song, you will, in your heart, you're going to be answering this question. You will answer this to God, to the living God, who is here tonight and want to hear your confession. You don't need to say this to me or to the person next to you. It is you and God. You need to understand that Jesus is much greater than uh, material goods or a physical cure, much more than anything that the world can give you because it's the owner of everything.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, while we're praying for the service, the Lord has given many spiritual gifts, many visions, revelations. And the visions, they are the way that God uses to speak with men. If you say this out, out there, people laugh at you. This week I was listening to the news and a woman was criticizing Man can speak with God, but God speaking with man, that's impossible. It is impossible in her mind. Because every day we hear the voice of God. Because Christ, Son of the living God, and who is alive, speaks. Who is alive, lay His hand upon us to bless us. Who is alive, is alive takes His place of King which is ahead of the cross. Jesus was ahead of Christ. The cross was behind him because the position of Jesus is ahead of man. Because he is the one who faced death for us. Yes, sir, the cross was behind Jesus because the position of Jesus was in the front. Position of warrior, position of victorious. This is our Jesus who faced the greatest of our enemies, which is death. There's no solution for death. Only the Word of God. Only the call of Jesus, only the voice of Jesus can give a solution to death. Isn't that true? When we die, our names are going to be called by, by the voice of Jesus. We resurrect and we'll be with Him eternally. So the visions are the way that God speaks with us. And the Lord has shown a woman who entered here. She has a problem in one of her legs. And the Lord, tonight he came here expecting a blessing, a cure. And look, cure for Jesus is nothing. What he wants is, is to save your life. What he wants truly is to take you who, who is limping with pain, with difficulties, counting your days towards death. What Jesus wants is to take you away from hell. It's such an ugly word, but this is true. What Jesus wants is to give you an experience, a living experience with him. He may even cure you. Nothing wrong with that. But what we need to do is to know the revealed Jesus, is to open up your heart and trust in Jesus, who is here tonight. And in another vision, I could see a man who is in the service here. Interesting that this man thinks that he knows everything about the Bible. He thought that he knew everything about the church, about salvation, about the Word of God. But during the service, 
the Holy Spirit touched, touched in his heart and put a fear of the Lord in his heart. He understood that he has a doubt regarding his salvation. He knows the Bible. He knows the history. But he is unsure about his salvation. has doubts about his own salvation. But tonight, the Lord is giving to him an opportunity. The Lord is answering by His glory and mercy. The Lord is removing this uh, thought, this doubt, and giving you an opportunity for of living this place knowing the true Jesus. The Jesus that can give you the assurance of your salvation. My brother, this topic here, this Many people think this, you know that? People preach about Jesus, they, they preach about Jesus, they evangelize, but then you ask them, are you sure of your salvation? He, he stuttered and he can't answer because many people inside the church are not sure about their own salvation. That's very sad. But tonight, the Lord wants to Lord is number. The Lord wants to give you this assurance that your name is written once and for all in the book of life. You just need to maintain your name there. Because salvation is something that you leave every day, the action. Tonight you may give this you may take this step. Uh, if you have doubt in this process, you may have even taken this step before, but this process needs to happen in your life. And the process, the one who maintains man in heaven. We know that salvation is an action and a process. If there is no processing in your life, then you need to seek the Lord so that He may take you to live this process of salvation. And there is also a man that every day he was there were many things that prevented him from coming to the church a few objections a few difficulties or barriers but the Lord gave him his blessing of once again to be here and the Lord is saying that those impediments they were created by the enemy of our souls to steal this blessing from him but you need not to waste any opportunity you need to embrace salvation with Jesus because those impediments happen when man is weak sure. if you are weak spiritually many times the enemy uses this gap uses this, those reasons to deviate our attention, to place other priorities, but our priority is to be constantly in fellowship with the Lord. Do not allow this. Fight for your blessing. Fight to, to, for your spiritual strengthening, because the weak becomes an easy uh, prey to the enemy. The enemy is cunning. First, the enemy goes after the ones who are weak. If you are weak spiritually, pray to the Lord. Ask for a spiritual cure and leave this place strengthened in Jesus. Amen. The Lord also revealed a woman that during the week had a thought of going to a place completely oppressed. And the Lord delivered this woman from doing this crazy thing. The Lord gave her a deliverance. The Lord brought her to here tonight so that she can hear, participate on the service and let go of those thoughts, this craziness and give herself completely to the Lord. My brother, there is no time to waste. Don't play with the enemy of our souls. Don't leave a gap. Don't play with things that may see your blessing. 
And in a situation like this, that you may not come back. In the situation in which you are, it is very difficult. Pray to the Lord. The opportunity is given to you tonight. The Lord knows wh that it is you. You wanted to do something that that would displease the Lord completely. And the Lord delivered you, took your feet out of those of, of those places that are abominable to the Lord. The Lord has shown also another woman. Oh boy, so many women, only one man? The men are good. The women are in trouble. Usually the women are always winning, right? Yeah, that's great. I've seen that a woman was clean. I'm going to read the gift literally, and then we're going to interpret, interpret the gift. I saw that a woman was cleaning up her house with the broom. And I, I thought that uh, it's part of her effort. If all the effort that she made, there were so many, there were corners in the house that the broom would not reach, and there was uh, also a lot of dust on the corners of the house. But an angel came from the part of the Lord and told her, "You need to let go of this broom, pray, kneel down, and pray to the Lord and open the door." And when she did that, came a wind, the wind of the Holy Spirit and cleaned, cleansed the entire house and would bring a refreshing to that house. Sometimes that's what we need. We struggle with things, struggle with what is human, fighting, fighting. But what we need is to give our lives to the Lord. Let go of the physical effort. Let go of what is of this world and know the revealed Jesus. You need this blessing? Have you identified one with one of the spiritual gifts? That's why the Lord brought you here. If the Lord spoke to your heart, if the Holy Spirit took control of your life, you can shout a glory to the Lord. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to stand up. We're going to have a word of duration to the Lord. And you, we will agree with the prayer. You agree with the glorification of the church saying, Lord, Amen. That's what we need. Brother and sister can glorify the Lord. Lord, I want to praise the name because every day you have fought our, of uh, battles. We praise the Lord because we know in which we have we have believed. We know that our God lives. Our God is always with His hands lay, laid upon us. Uh, we. You help us when we make our wrong decisions. You have the one, the one who has fed us. We praise the Lord and give you praise because tonight we know that you manifested of your Holy Spirit in the midst of your people. We praise the Lord because your word spoke deeply to our hearts. And we know, Lord, that soon we will be with our God in eternity. We praise the Lord for our salvation not of man, but of the person of the Lord Jesus. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Father, we want to praise your holy name. Because in truth, we know that you are present in this place. We can feel the, your Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit walking among us. With our eyes of faith, we can see your angels ministering the actions of justice in our behalf. That's why we say with a single voice, we praise your holy name. We say that you are holy, three times holy. We glorify the Lord. We praise your holy name. And we ask you that we may receive our adoration, giving us a wake of victories in your presence. Take us home in peace. And we ask that we continue speaking to the hearts helping us, guiding us, letting us, leading us to live in Jesus, who is our only mediator. He's the only Savior. Receive our service. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your, your name is say that a wonderful grace 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. Praise group is going to sing a song softly and uh, ushers and deacons can go out. If you want a prayer, we are here at your disposal. The, the Lord spoke to you during the service. Glorify the Lord. Thank you. 